This is part 12. In part 12, we're going to go through step 8 in this packet tracer activity that I created for my students. You can download this activity at my website at danscourses.com. In step 8, we deal with access lists. Let's look at the instructions. Configure access lists on R2 to limit outside access into the network. Okay, this is important because the first thing to consider is where are we going to be creating the access lists? It tells us that we're going to be creating them on R2, this router right here, and we want to limit outside access into the network. Well, our network is everything from R2 to R1 and beyond, and everything from R2 to R3 and beyond. The outside is the interface that goes to the internet over here. So if we want to limit outside access, that means outside coming in. So that would be on serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 inbound. Inbound or outbound is always from the perspective of the router. So this makes sense because if this is our border router or our edge router to the internet, then we want to, by default, on our outside facing interface, block all traffic that's initiated from the outside. Let's say hackers want to reach our, our network from outside. They're going to initiate communication or going to try to initiate communication from the outside in. And generally, you want to deny all that traffic. So all traffic inbound on serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. So that is where we'll be applying our access list inbound on that interface. Okay, so let's look at it. Configure an extended access list, number 100, to achieve the following three lines only. So we're going to write this access list in three lines, and we want to achieve these things. From the outside, permit port 80 access to the web server. We have a web server on our network here at 192.168.35.252. But we need to remember that this web server actually from outside on the internet is known as 209.165.201.65. Why? Because we configured in an earlier tutorial network address translation that translates this public IP address to the web server's private IP address. So what we need to do is create an access list rule that will permit people on the internet to access our web server at 209.165.201.65 on port 80. So we want to allow only that traffic through our access list, which essentially is working as a firewall, blocking outside requests into our network. So let's set that up. We'll go to R2 here. I'll open that up and open the window a little bit and we'll get to global config mode and we'll write access dash list 100 we know it's 100 because the instructions called for an access list numbered 100 so this is an extended ACL All right we're going to permit TCP from anywhere from any source address to host 209.165.201.65 equal to port 80. So only if the destination port is 80, meaning that hosts are requesting web services, then we'll allow them to reach just this host only. Put that command in, and there's our first access list rule. Now notice, from any source address, to 209.165.201.65. That's not the private IP address of our web server. It's the public IP address that we set and we configured R2 to translate, network address translate, or NAT, from this public address to this private address. So that's important. So now we have to do our second rule. Our second rule that we need to write is from the outside permit pings ICMP echo requests that were initiated from within the network only. So if users on our network want to ping, let's say, a server out here, they issue an echo request that leaves the network and then it hits the server and then the server replies with an echo reply and that's what we want to allow through is the return traffic from a ping from within our network. So really what we're allowing is the echo reply to come through. We don't want to allow echo requests from the outside because those could be used as a denial of service attack, let's say, to the router or something like that. We just want to allow 
echo replies. So we'll do that now. So to do that, we say access dash list 100 permit. And this time, instead of TCP, we're going to put ICMP because that is the protocol for ping. And we'll say from anywhere, from any source, to any destination, as long as it's just an echo reply. So echo requests from the outside are not going to be allowed, just echo replies. So that will effectively allow us to have our pings from inside return to us. Okay, now for the last rule. For the last rule, it says permit established web page requests generated from within the network only. So right now, even though traffic generated from within our network is not blocked leaving the network, in other words, these PCs here could request a web page from this Initech web server, and those port 80 requests are allowed out because there's no access list or firewall blocking requests leaving the network. When that web server tries to return those web pages to us, it's going to get blocked because of our access list. So far, we've only allowed two things. We've allowed users on the internet to request web pages from our web server, but we haven't allowed return web pages that we've requested from our network to come back to us. So essentially, that's what we need to allow. So let's see how we can craft the statement to allow that type of return traffic. To do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say access-list 100 permit TCP from any source as long as the source port number is equal to 80. When we request web pages, the destination port is port 80 because we want to reach a web server. When those web servers reply to us, the source port number, if it's coming from a web server, is equal to port 80. So any source address, as long as it's equal to 80, this is going to mean that it's going to be a reply from a web server. And we'll say it's allowed to reach any destination address. And we're going to put in an extra keyword here. I'll put a question mark. You can see that there's a word here, established. So we'll put that in there. We'll say established. As long as this has been established traffic, an established TCP session that we've requested from the inside, we'll allow that traffic back through. So I'll hit enter, and there we go. There's the end of our access list. Now you want to remember, at the end of an access list, there's an implicit deny all or deny any. Or in this case, since it's an extended ACL, at the end of the access list is an implicit deny any any. So only traffic that you allow through will be allowed. Everything else will be blocked. But in three lines, we were able to accomplish everything that was requested in the instructions. Now we need to configure an IPv6 firewall. To do that, it's going to be very similar. So let's get started with it. Configure an IPv6 access list, and it's going to be firewall-IPv6. So it's a named firewall. For IPv6 access lists, they're extended ACLs, but they're also named ACLs. So we have to do that. So let's try to do that. We'll say IPv6 ACC, I'll hit tab, IPv6 access list. Let's put in a question mark, then the word. All right, so firewall, all caps, dash IP, and I think it's capital V, and 6. And that is the name of the firewall. So we'll just double check that here. Firewall dash IPv6. Excellent. So now, as you can see, we're in config dash IPv6 dash ACL mode. And let's see what we want to write. From the outside, permit pings that were initiated from within the network only. So that's the same thing as the other access list statement, so that should be pretty easy. Since we're in named access list mode, all we have to do is say permit ICMP from anywhere to anywhere as long as it's in echo reply. So there's the first rule. And then the second rule, permit established web page requests generated from within the network only. Okay, and it says here you will need to use the established keyword at the end of the line, just like we did before. So we'll just do the same thing. Permit TCP 
from anywhere as long as it's equal to port 80, so the source port is 80, to anywhere as long as it's an established TCP session. All right, that's done. So now we've written two access lists. We've written access list 100 for IPv4, and we've written access list, a named access list, firewall-IPv6 for IPv6. All we have to do now is apply them to the correct interface in the correct direction. And we already know that the correct interface is serial 010, and the direction is inbound. And we pretty much figured that out from reading the instructions, what we're trying to do. So let's do it. We'll type exit, and then interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. And for the IPv4 access list, we'll say IP ACC, I'll hit tab, access group, and then I need to put the, the number of the access list. In this case, it's number 100 and inbound. So that applies the IPv4 access list, 100 inbound. And now how about for IPv6? We'll say IPv6, put a space and a question mark. Let's say I forgot what to do. Well, in this case, look what it says here, traffic-filter, access control list for packets. That's the command to apply the IPv6 access list to the interface. So we'll type TRA tab traffic dash filter, and then put a question mark. Okay, the name, easy, firewall dash IPv6 in all caps, and then inbound. And that's it. And so now our two access lists are applied to the interface, and we should be good. Now, since this is a test and you're graded on the activity, you want to make sure that it's functioning correctly. So that would be a good strategy. So for instance, we are allowing pings back through the network. So we could go to PC1, desktop, command prompt, and try to ping this Initech web server out on the internet. 209 .205. .201 dot two five zero All right, ping and you can see the pings allowed through great okay so that's working if that's allowed through hopefully web pages are allowed back through as well let's try 209.165.201.250 press go and look it says welcome to Initech so we're able to get web pages so that's working now let's test to see if this PC can reach our web server over here using the public IP address that's being used for it with NAT. So we'll just open up this PC, go to desktop, web browser, and we want to reach 209.165.201.65, press go. Hey, welcome to Dan's Courses. Thanks for dropping by. We can reach the web server. Excellent. Now, if we've also set everything up correctly, we shouldn't be able to ping from the outside. So I'll try to ping that web server and see what happens. 209.165.201.65, and this should be blocked. It says, destination host unreachable. So that's good.